The one universal phrase that keeps many gacha players thinking whether or not they have made the right choice with their premium currency. Power Creep Now Power Creep does definitely exist in Weathering Waves as it's pretty much inevitable in every single gacha game, but is Power Creep really significant enough in this game to make you summon for meta characters? So I'm gonna run through how significant Power Creep is now. When would Power Creep become most relevant? Factors you should consider other than Power Creep and ultimately, how to avoid ruining your account. Just before we jump right into it, would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel for more Weathering Waves content, and if you're a fan of Chang Li's personality, drop a like and comment as proof. Now, power creep is when a character can perform more efficiently than another character in a specific role, whether that's dealing more damage or providing stronger buffs and heals to your team. Looking at a few characters, for example, the previous best main DPS character was Jian, and the current best main DPS character is the magistrate herself, Jin Chi. Jian is an absolute powerhouse of a DPS character where once you pop his liberation, you can join Chang Li with putting a blindfold on and just spam left click. The amount of attacks that rush out during his liberation allow him to parry pretty consistently and groups enemies together with no escape. Then you have Jin Chi that has not one but two nukes within her kit, being from the final form resonance skill and resonance liberation. Jin Chi can provide a lot more through her kit such as a second concerto meter for the team, aerial combat which helps in many situations and better looking dragons. Of course the main difference is Jin Chi can deal more damage than Jian and is the hardest hitting damage dealer in the game by far. So it goes without saying she will be able to clear all of the content within the game. However Jian since launch has been able to clear everything in the game too and he still has the capability of doing so. The only exception where he might have a drop in performance is in the Tower of Adversity as the rules do change, and it will most of the time try to cater towards the newer characters so they look a lot more appealing to pull for. The point is that both Jian and Jinshi are able to clear all of the content in the game. Naturally you would be able to clear certain content quicker with the better character, but if both are able to achieve the same goal then you shouldn't be too concerned about having to pick up the best character. So even though Jinshi has has power creep to Jian in the main DPS position, it doesn't mean Jian is any worse of a character than he was and is still a powerful DPS character. Now there are other factors that players may value more in a character than just being more efficient in a role, some factors being the amount of skill required to play a character, unique traits or mechanics a character may have and the most important factor would be aesthetics. As I mentioned with Jian, once you pop his resonance liberation, you just spam left click for the entire duration to deal a ton of damage, whereas with Jin Shi it isn't as simple as you would need to charge stacks of incandescence to ensure the final form resonance skill deals a ton of damage. I'm not saying Jinchi's kit is complex to understand but in comparison to Jian, that takes a bit of time to be able to pop his liberation to be fair but once you're there you deal lots of damage with minimal effort. So rather than opting to pull for a character that does more damage but takes more effort in doing so, over characters that achieve the same end goal with less effort would be definitely something to take into consideration. This would be the reason why Zhang Liao has a lot of potential in 1.2. As I have speculated, he will be an Electro Gauntlet main DPS character, which would contend with the current best Electro main DPS character, Kulcharo. As great as Kulcharo is in the main DPS position, he isn't the easiest and most enjoyable character to play, as there's just a lot to consider when playing with him, such as having to prepare for the big ultimate damage window and constantly having to swap cancel in order to deal damage optimally. So if Zhang Lia was to drop as a main Electro DPS character and is able to deal around the same amount of damage as Kulcharo deals, but doesn't take as much effort as Kulcharo does, he would be a much more valuable character for some players. Of course you can say well it's a skill issue but at the end of the day, it does mean there's less of a chance you mess up in dealing damage optimally and you would just be more consistent overall. Also some players would just rather not sweat to beat a boss and prefer more comfortability. So linking back to the same point as before, if both Kulcharo and Zhang Liao are able to clear the same content in the game, then there would be little significance to whether or not Zhang Liao would power creep Kulcharo. For the record, I have no clue whether or not Zhang Liao will be more powerful or even if he's less powerful than Kulcharo, but if he is easier to play than Kulcharo, it would be something to definitely consider. Now a character's aesthetics in my opinion should hold the most value when considering to pick up a character. As time passes, aesthetics and the improvement of animations usually go hand in hand with characters that perform the most efficiently, but it isn't always the case. For example, Chang Li is releasing next and has the best aesthetics in the game, but isn't actually going to power creep anyone, as the best 
best main DPS will remain as Jin Shi and the best sub DPS will likely still be Yin Lin. However, Chang Li would still be able to clear a majority of content in the game and will not stop many players including myself from pulling for her. So again, power creep doesn't really matter since Chang Li is still a very strong character and if you like her design, the fact that she doesn't power creep shouldn't stop you from picking her up. In other words, waifu over meta. Lastly, unique traits and mechanics in a character would be a huge factor to consider since they would provide a lot more value to a character's kit. Chang Li's outro skill or even Jin Chi's second concerto meter for example would be traits that ultimately provide more longevity to a character's usefulness as they would provide more flexibility in team building. So my point is there are factors that are just as important or even more important than how efficient a character can be in a specific role. Being the skill it requires to take in order to reach the character's max potential, unique mechanics that can allow for more flexibility within your account and most importantly if you like the character's design. So as the game stands, power creep does definitely exist but it isn't as significant as it will be later on. The most difficult content in the game currently would be tower of adversity and hologram bosses and there's plenty of characters that aren't meta that can clear these modes. Some may require more skill like dungeon and Kalcharo, and some may require less like Gion. So when would power creep really kick in and become a lot more relevant? The simple answer would be when more endgame content is introduced. This could be in a couple of months or perhaps a year from now but since weathering waves has been marketed as a difficult combat game to really challenge players with intense boss fights and if majority of players are clearing through content without much of a challenge it would just become Genshin 2.0. So by the rate that power creep is going currently, seeing many players able to clear through hologram 6 bosses with their Jinshi with not too much difficulty, I would expect more endgame content to drop quite soon. Whether it would be in the form of a completely new mode that throws a number of bosses at you or we could expect to see hologram boss 7 and upwards much sooner than later. Only then power creep might be more significant and the difference in DPS may be the difference in you clearing or not. However, no one can really determine when new endgame content would drop and whether or not it will really make the difference in power creep. So for now, I'll end on this. To avoid ruining your account, you should pull for the characters that suit you. Of course, the more meta a character is, the easier it will be in clearing more difficult content, but you should prioritize what you favor in a character, whether that's efficiency, comfortability, or design. Since each character has their own unique traits and features which I don't expect to see on another character for a very long time. So just build your account with characters that fit your playstyle since power creep isn't that big of a deal right now. Overall, power creep isn't really as relevant in non-PVP games like Genshin and Weathering Waves, but at some point it will kick in and that would be when more difficult content does drop. So for now, just try to not be too concerned with who's meta and who will be power crept. Just wanted to get this out for players that don't know too much about power creep and would be thinking whether or not they are using the astrats wisely. And for veterans that may have just wanted a bit of reassurance. Ultimately, who you pull for is down to you as always. So if you enjoy pulling for characters purely based off whether or not they are meta, it's your account at the end of the day. So again, pull whichever character that suits you the most. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel for more Wuthering Waves content and if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Also drop a comment on what you prioritize more from a character. Efficiency, comfortability or design. And yeah, hope to catch you guys later.